Okay, everybody, let's take a look at our newest project. It is a small roll top made by National Mount Airy. Remarkably good shape. Little cubbies in here. Does have a light of sorts. If you can call it that. Shouldn't have too much trouble with this. So we're going to get this cleaned up and then we are going to update it to look a little bit prettier. Um, right now it just looks a bit plain. All right, let's get started. So I started by scuff sanding with 100 grit sandpaper. So we wanna take this, these little shelves out so that we've got better access to give this thing a nice thorough paint job. So I've taken my extender, put it into a seven millimeter socket, put that onto a socket wrench and remarkably it is going to work to get these out. Um, There's no way that you could get an actual screwdriver in there. It's just so tight. Our shelves have been liberated. No oh, treasures. And that lets us take that out. This is the little clamp that holds the light so that you can't pull it out. So, got the light liberated. We got the roll top out. This lets us get in here and make sure that we get, see all that dust? So we can go in now and clean that quite well. We can also get that scuff sanded and painted so that your paint job looks consistent. You just don't want it to look all yucky. Okay, I want to remove this slider top. I don't think there's anything wrong with this surface, so I think I might try and save that. But I need the slider top out. And if you look, what holds it in and keeps it from sliding all the way out is this, it's got a dowel rod on each side that comes down to keep you from sliding it all the way out. So, we just remove that dowel rod. We can now pull that all the way out. Let's see. I believe that's all that we need to take apart to get a nice clean paint job on this. So we're going to stop here, go back, re-clean again, sand down some more, and then we will get started on the fun bit. Okay, so we are ready to paint this piece. And after going through several different color choices, which I couldn't make my mind up on, I went for a totally different direction. Um, I was gonna go with a light blue, but that just feels a bit spring to me. So rather than going with a trendy color, we're going to keep it a classic color that it's more of a kind of a beige. We know that the browns are here to stay for a while. Um, this one, I mixed it with a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow to warm it up. And I think it'll be quite neutral and quite nice. And then we'll do some other stuff to it. But this way, it will fit into decor without it. It's not going to be your statement piece. So I think it'll work. So let's get started. If you like our content, please remember to hit that like, subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed, about 72% of our watchers are not subscribed, please remember to hit that subscribe button. 
It really does help us to move up in the YouTube algorithm and we really appreciate all of the support that you have given us. Okay, now we have this piece with its first coat of top coat on it. We're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna do some other things to it and then we're gonna put another coat of top coat on it after that. The color came out really quite good. Depending on your background color or your flooring, it's gonna either go beige, very, 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 very soft peach, or a very, very, very soft pink. It's a very versatile color, um, kind of reminiscent of the Sherwin-Williams Heritage line. And they, it's got some similar colors to it, um, more coffees and taupes. So this would be more in the taupe family, um, just to bring some of that, that beige and brown earthy tones back into the home. So I am very pleased with the paint color that I mixed up and it feels absolutely amazing. I think it's gonna look great when we're done with it. A few weeks ago, I bought this transfer from Redesign with Prima. It's called Blossom Flight and I really, really like the transfer. It comes in three sections, so you can either use full sections and you could piece them together to make one very large um, picture. Most of the time I've seen it on blue and I didn't want to do it on blue because everyone does it on blue, so I wanted to try it on a different color and I think this, this is gonna be the piece I'm gonna try it on. So let's um, start cutting it apart because we don't need the entire transfer. The one thing that you want to watch out for on transfers is this line down here where they kind of stop the transfer. I want my transfer to come from here. So I need to cut off this little white part down here. Well, it's not white, it's clear, but I need to cut it off so that my transfer will start where I want it to. So we're going to do that. And I've already cut this piece off of one of the larger sections. We're just going to remove the backing from the transfer. Be quite careful because once you, once you touch that paint, that's it. It's going to stick. So have it where you want it before you let it touch. Transfers are a great way to get a different kind of look. And you can, you can layer them. So if you had a flower transfer, you could put that over this or under it even. And then you're just gonna take your little, your little stick and you're gonna just rub the transfer. is much easier on a flat surface rather than a curved surface but don't hesitate to try it because it's really a way to really take your your look to the next level a lot of times we will post pictures um, of projects that we're working on on Instagram we try sometimes successfully What I've done is I've gone through, made a few molds. I have put them on the front of the piece and just taped them into place because when the molds first come out, they're quite flexible. So going over a rounded surface, if you kind of tape them into place when they fully set up, then they will take that shape. And we're gonna paint these molds up now and then we'll glue them on. But I have them in place, so I'm gonna paint them up one at a time just to just to keep it straight in my head where they're going. Got my paper plate here, and I'm just gonna use a white, black, green, um, a brown, 
just got my artist brushes here and we're going to get started. I'm just barely tapping the edges with some black. It just kind of outlines it, so that's why we're doing that. All right, there's one done. We'll let him dry, and then we'll glue him on. Not too bad. And we want these flowers to match the other flowers, so. And if we look at the center of these flowers, they have some green and browns in there. So we're going to get those in there as well. Pretty close match. All right, that's how I'm going to do this. And I'm going to get on with this because I can't say that it's very interesting. Um, but that's how I do this. And that's the process. So. I'm just going to get on with it and I'll let you see when I'm done. So we have this piece all top coated, got the hardware back on, and I think what I'm going to do is put a little bit of wax on it and bring out some of those details. So let's get started on that. Now I've top coated before I put the wax on and that helps to get to have a bit more control over the wax. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in here. I looked at doing kind of a brown wax, but um, I tried it and it just didn't, just didn't work with this color. It just made it look really dirty. Now remember, if you get too much wax or you put it on, you decide you don't like it. You can remove it with mineral spirits or clear wax. Wax will take off wax. So just keep that in mind that, you know, if you do something, you don't like it, it's easily, easily reversible. With this color, it's really hard to see that there's a line right there on the top of that the little foot so this thing has a lot of depth to it but with this color it's you really kind of have to highlight it out which i think that does quite nicely you can do as much of this or as little as you like it's just whatever you prefer I'm basically just wanting it to look like shadows, um, but you could shade with this. So if you wanted to kind of shade and make those corners a bit more rounded, you could. So there's just a multitude of things that you can do with different colored waxes. All right, I'm going to get on and do the rest of this and we'll get a look at the full project. Well, we have this piece all finished now and I think it looks amazing. So we removed the back from underneath. I think that that gives it a more open feel and will appeal to more people. We've got the details highlighted with the black wax that just makes them pop. Beautiful drawers that slide easily. And the top just goes up really nicely. Nice writing surface. Slides like a dream. The moldings just came out so nice on this piece. We've black waxed around the edges of the top and the drawers as well, as well as the little shelf on top. But this little secretary is just stunning. I think it came out well. It came a long way from where it was. 
it just has a lot of character and I think somebody will absolutely love having it in their home office or their entryway. It's all done and we will see you on the next video.